Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. We are going to be looking at 1 Kings today. So now we're going to be jumping in chapters 1 and 2 of that. Uh, we're also going to continue looking at Psalm. We have Psalm 37, 71, and 94. So if you remember yesterday, we were looking at a lot of different attributes of God. So why do we praise him? Why do we worship? Well, we looked at a lot of those yesterday. Uh, there's infinitely more, but uh, that's what we spent a good chunk of our time looking at. Today, uh, in Kings 1 and 2, we're going to be looking at some of the story of Adonijah and Solomon. Um, so really, really interesting stuff with Adonijah. Um, really, it's his, um, I don't know, blitz at being king. So he sees an opportunity and he's going to try and seize it. Um, now, he doesn't have the right to do that, but he is going to be uh, seeking to uh, claim that from David or uh, in spite of Solomon, David's son. So we'll see that. Um, we're also going to take a look at the heritage between the righteous and the wicked. So what do we have to look forward to um, if we're wicked? What do we have to look forward to if we're righteous? Um, and then lastly, God's role um, specifically as our refuge and as our salvation. Uh, so we will see all of that once again in 1 Kings 1 and 2, Psalm 37, 71, and 94. So 1 Kings, 1 Kings 1. Now, King David was old, advanced in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not get warm. Therefore his servants said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be sought for our lord the king, and let her stand before the king, and let her care for him, and let her lie in your bosom, that our lord the king may be warm. So they sought for a young, lovely woman throughout all the territory of Israel, and found Abishag, the Shumanite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very lovely, and she cared for the king and served him, but the king did not know her. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not rebuked him at any time by saying, Why have you done so? He was also very good looking. His mother had borne him after Absalom. Then he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abathar, the priest, and they followed and helped Adonijah. But Zadok, the priest, Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, Rei, and the mighty men who belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah sacrificed sheep and oxen and fattened cattle by the stone of Zalioth, which is by the Enrogel. He also invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaniah the mighty men, or Solomon his brother. So Nathan spoke to Bathsheba, the son, the mother of the son, the mother of Solomon, saying, "Have you not heard that Adonijah the son of Haggith has become king, and David our lord does not know it? Come, please let me now give you advice." that you may save your own life and the life of your son, Solomon. Go immediately to King David and say to him, Did you not, my lord, O king, swear to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly, your son, Solomon, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? Then, while you are still talking with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the chamber to the king. Now the king was very old, and Abishag the Shumanite was serving the king, and Bathsheba bowed and did not, and did homage to the king. Then the king said, What is your wish? Then she said to him, My lord, you swore by the Lord your God to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly, Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne. So now look, Adonijah has become king, and now my lord the king, you do not know about it. He has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the sons of the king, Abathar the priest, and Joab the commander of the army. But Solomon, your servant, he has not invited. And as for you, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, that you should tell them who will sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it will happen, when my lord the king rests with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon will be counted as offenders. And just then, while she was still talking with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. So they told the king, saying, Here is Nathan the prophet. And when he came in before the king, he bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, have you said that Adonijah shall reign after me, and, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down today, and has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons and commanders of the army, and Abathar the priest, and look, 
They are eating and drinking before him. And they say, long live King Adonijah. But he has not invited me. He has not invited me, me, your servant, nor Zadok the priest, nor Benaniah the son of Jehoiada, nor your servant Solomon. Has this thing been done by my lord the king, and you have not told your servant who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then King David answered and said, Call Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king took an oath and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress, just as I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly Solomon, your son, shall be king after me and shall sit on my throne in my place, so I certainly will do to this day. Then Bathsheba bowed her face to the earth and paid homage to the king and said, Let my lord, King David, live forever. And King David said, Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaniah the son of Jehoiada. So they came before the king. The king also said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and have Solomon my son ride on my own mule, and take him down to Gihon. There let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel, and blow the horn, and say, Long live King Solomon. Then you shall come up after him, and he shall come and sit on my throne, and he shall be king in my place, for I have appointed him to be ruler over, the, over Israel and Judah. Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king and said, Amen. May the Lord God of my lord, the king, say, say so too. As the Lord has been with my lord, the king, even so may he be with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah the son of Jehoiada, the Chethrotites, and the Parathites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and took him to Gihon. Then Zadok the priest took a horn of oil from the tabernacle and anointed Solomon, and they blew the horn, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, and people played with flutes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth seemed to split with their sound. Now Adonijah and all his guests who were with him heard it as they finished eating. And when Joab heard the sound of the horn, he said, Why is the city in such a noisy uproar? While he was still speaking, there came Jonathan, the son of Abathar, the priest, and Adonijah said to him, Come in, for you are a prominent man, and bring good news. Then Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, No, our lord King David has made Solomon king. The king has sent him, sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah the son of Jehoiada, the Chethrotites, and the Pelethites, that the, and they have made him ride on the king's mule. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon, and they have gone, gone up from there, rejoicing so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. And Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom, and moreover, the king's servants have gone to bless our lord King David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon better than your name, and may he make his throne greater than your throne. Then the king bowed himself on the bed. and Also, the king said thus, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has given one to sit on my throne this day, while my eyes still see it. So all the guests who were with Adonijah were afraid and arose, and each one went his own way. Now Adonijah was afraid of Solomon, so he rose and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Indeed, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon, for look, he has taken hold of the horns of the altar, saying, let King Solomon swear to me today that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. Then Solomon said, If he proves himself a worthy man, not one of one hair of him shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent them to bring him down to the altar. And he came and fell down before King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go to your house. First Kings 2. Now, the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his commandments, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and whatever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed, to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you know also what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me, 
and what he did to the last two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner, the son of Ner, and Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he killed. And he shed the blood of war in peacetime, and put blood on, blood of war on his belt that was around his waist, and on his sandals that were on his feet. Therefore, do according to your wisdom, and do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace. But show kindness to the sons of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For so they came to me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And see, you have with you Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite from Buhurim, who cursed me with a malicious curse on the day that I went to Manahim. But he came down to meet me at the Jordan, and I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now, therefore, do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man, and you know what you ought to do to him. But bring his gray hair down to the grave with blood. So David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. The period that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron, and in Jerusalem he reigned 33 years. Then Solomon sat on the throne of his father, of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Now, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. So she said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. Moreover, he said, I have something to say to you. And she said, Say it. Then he said, You know that the kingdom was mine, and that all Israel set their expectations on me that I should reign. However, the kingdom has been turned over and has become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. Now I ask one petition of you. Do not deny me. And she said to him, Say it. Then he said, Please speak to King Solomon, for he will not refuse you, that you, or that he may give me Abishag, the Shumanite, as a wife. So Bathsheba said, Very well, I will, speak, I will speak for you to the king. Bathsheba went, therefore, to the king Solomon, to speak to him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed down to her, and sat down on his throne, and had a throne set for the king's mother. So she sat at his right hand. Then she said, I desire one small petition of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, Ask it, my mother, for I will not refuse you. So she said, Let Abishag, the Shumanamite, be given to Adonijah, your brother, as wife. And King Solomon answered and said to his mother, Now why do you ask Abishag, the Shumanamite, for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my older brother, for him and Abathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, May God do so to me, and more so, if Adonijah does not, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. Now, therefore, as the Lord lives, who has confirmed me and set me on the throne of David my father, and who has promised a house for me as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaniah the son of Jehoiada, and he struck him down, and he died. And to Abathar the priest the king said, Go to Anathoth, to your own fields, for you are deserving of death. But I will not put you to death at this time, because you carried the ark of the Lord God before my father David, and because you were afflicted every time my father was afflicted. So Solomon removed Abathar from being priest to the, Lord, to the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spoke concerning the house of Eli at Shiloh. Then news came to Joab, for Joab had defected to Adonijah though he had not defected to Absalom. So Joab fled to the tabernacle of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. And King Solomon was told, Joab has fled to the tabernacle of the Lord. There he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go, strike him down. So Benaniah went to the tabernacle of the Lord and said to him, Thus says the king, Come out. And he said, No, but I will die here. And Benaniah brought back word to the king, saying, Thus says Joab, and thus he answered me. Then the king said to him, Do as he has said, and strike him down and bury him, that you may take away from me and from the house of my father the innocent blood which Joab has shed. So the Lord will return his blood on his head, because he struck down two men more righteous and better than he, and killed them with the sword, Abner the son of Ner, the commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa the son of Jether, the commander of the army of Judah, though my father David did not know it. Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab and upon the head of his descendants forever. But upon David and his descendants, upon his house and his throne, there shall be peace forever from the Lord. So Benaniah the son of Jehoiada went, and went up and struck and killed him, and he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. The king put Benaniah the son of Jehoiada in his place over the army and put 
and the king put Zadok the priest in the place of Abathar. Then the king sent and called for Shimei and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and do not go out from there anywhere, for it shall be on that day that you go out and cross the book brook Kidron. Know for certain that you shall surely die. Your blood shall be on your own head. And Shimei said to the king, The saying is good, as my lord the king has said, so your servant will do. So Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. Now it happened at the end of three years that two slaves of Shimei ran away to Achish, the son of Makkah, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, Look, your slaves are in Gath. So Shimei arose, saddled his donkey, and went to Achish at Gath to seek his slaves. And Shimei went and brought his slaves from Gath. And Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and come back. Then the king sent and called for Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and warn you, saying that know for certain that you will die on the day that you go out and travel anywhere? You shall surely die. And you have said to me, The word I have heard is good. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I gave you? And the king said moreover to Shimei, You know, as your heart acknowledges all the wickedness that you did to my father David. Therefore, the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head. But King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the king, before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck him down, and he died. Thus the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. All right, next one, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wickedness schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you shall look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall seek delight in them shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn their sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their blows sh bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and I am now old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore, for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree, yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in their time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Psalm 71. 
In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given me the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I have become as wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age or forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies speak against me and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together, saying God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take, pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let them who confounded and consumed, who are adversaries of my life, let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. But <clears throat> I will hope continually and my praise will yet am, and, and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day. For I do not know their limits. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, do not forsake me, until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. Also, your righteousness, O God, is very high. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you? You who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Also, with the lute I will praise you and your faithfulness, O my God. To you I will sing with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips shall rejoice greatly when I sing to you and my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought to shame who seek my hurt. And lastly, Psalm 94. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs, O, Lord, o God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth, render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the wicked and the stranger, in murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob understand. Understand, you senseless among the people, and you fools, when you when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, he shall not hear. He who has formed the eye, he shall not see. He who instructs all nations, shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment will return to righteousness, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord has been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity be devised, devised by evil? Shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. But the Lord has been my defense and my God, the rock of my refuge. He has brought on them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. The Lord our God shall cut them off. I don't have a whole lot more to say to that. I think that's, uh, yeah, there's a lot there, but Jesus conquered it all for us. That's really all I can say to it. As always, friends, thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day.